It's good to be here again for another Bible study. And we're thankful for your presence and your attendance in this uh, electronic study. Thankful that each of you have had the opportunity to be here. And we're thankful for the means that we have to uh, continue studying God's Word, even though we can't meet uh, in person. We uh, say that each of you should continue to do Bible study at home and continue to be um, mindful of God's Word, even as we uh, continue to battle this pandemic. We are studying in a book by Wendell Winkler entitled The Christian and His Influence, and we are currently in the chapter on the influence in the home, and we will move forward through this chapter and probably finish it today and then move into the next lesson. So as we do so, let's begin with a prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful that we have been blessed with this day, with this time to study your word. We're thankful, Father, that you have given us all that you have, and knowing that all good and perfect gifts come down from you. We're thankful, Father, for your son Jesus, for his love for us, for his willingness to die on the cross and shed his blood for our sins. We're thankful, Father, that we've been blessed with the knowledge of the truth, and we pray, Father, that you would continue to be with us as we work and worship and as we spread your word throughout the world. We pray that we can be influences in our lives, in our jobs, in our homes, in our communities, and we pray, Father, that those influences and examples will be positive and lead others to you. Be with those who are sick and those who are grieving. Forgive us when we sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so as we finished last week, we talked some about how uh, in the home we should be considerate. We should value each other. We should be happy with each other. We should be uh, respecting and submitting one to another. And we should be practicing the golden rule as we go day to day in our lives, not only in the home, but on our jobs, at school, and in our community. So if we do those things, not only in our home, but in other places that we are, then we will have uh, much better lives and, and we will be much happier ourselves. As we move forward, the uh, influence of parents in the lives of children is discussed, and we'll move through this uh, section. The greatest single influential factor in the life of a child is his home life. And be turning over to Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Here um, we read, uh, it says, Behold, everyone that useth proverbs shall use this proverb, uh, proverb against thee, saying this, As is the mother, so is her daughter. So that's telling us that uh, the daughter is going to do what the mother does and the son is going to typically do what the father does. So if you are a good Christian influence, then your children will be good and, uh, and provide that positive influence in the world. Between birth and the age of 21, the average child will spend 105,000 hours awake. Of those waking hours, he will spend 2,100 in Bible school and that and worship, Bible school and worship. And that's the maximum amount, 2,100 hours. And about 10,000 hours will be spent in school. That's um, grade school through 12th grade. And then 92,000 hours will be spent at home. So we see that there is uh, a good amount of influence from the secular world in education. And then we see that there is very little influence uh, in the Bible school uh, by church leaders and teachers. And, and worship, and then we see that there are, is an overwhelming amount of time spent at home. So we see that truly the greatest influence is at home. And so we can't rely on our secular teachers to teach our children, and then we can't rely on the, the short amount of time uh, for 
um, Bible class teachers to teach our children to be positive influences. So it's our responsibility, and we have to take that responsibility with uh, great care. Parents should properly influence their children. Let's look at a couple of passages here. The first one being Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. And we're going to look at verse 6. Proverbs 22, 6 tells us to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And then in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, verse 4. Tells us here, and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So parents should be in constant prayer for their children. They should be constantly providing instruction and a proper instruction and proper influence. In um, in the Jewish uh, life, when a Jew is asked, what manner of child shall this be? Luke one sixty six says he will be a Jew. 99 out of every 100 times, he will be right. When a Catholic is asked the same question, he replies, he will be a Catholic. And nine times out of every 10, he will be right. He That person will be uh, grow up to be uh, worship in the Catholic Church. However, when Christians are asked, the question they reply, nobody knows. Isn't this an indication that we know that we're not ex uh, exerting as strong of influence in the lives of our children as we should? Um, it's very important that we as Christians be influencing our children that the church may continue to grow. And we see how Others have the influence on their children and how, and if you look at the religious world, oftentimes the uh, decision for adulthood religion is that of their childhood. And so, so definitely we should be um, influencing our children to continue to grow up in the New Testament church. And that has to be our influence on our children must be in the right way. Uh, we know that childhood is very a, a dangerous and susceptible period of time as far as influence. And if they receive a bad influence in childhood, this could mean uh, failure in the future. Uh, the future of our nation depends on our children and the proper training. And we all know that our nation is in a turbulent time. And uh, we should be doing all that we can to influence our children to be God-fearing, God-honoring, and uh, in all that they do in the future to continue those things. The future of the church depends upon the proper training that we give our children. For, our, for the church of the Lord, the New Testament church, uh, God's kingdom, for it to continue as uh, we expect it to, for it to continue to grow, then we have to be a positive influence. We have to properly train. We have to properly teach. And we have to teach the truth again in love. And we can't be uh, wavering. And we need to uh, ensure that the church continues. This is true because the salvation of parents depends on whether or not they have given their children proper training. Um, you know, it's very uh, incumbent upon the parents to properly teach their children. And uh, that responsibility uh, is not uh, or should not be taken lightly. We certainly do not want our children to end up uh, in everlasting punishment. And sometimes we can do all that we can to teach them the truth. We can be examples and, and demonstrate the uh, truth to them, and sometimes they still don't follow through with the proper uh, education that they've received. But we are responsible for teaching the truth. And this should be early. We should start early. Second Timothy 2.15 or 3.15 tells us that. 
parents should put their children in Bible school as soon as possible. Uh, we should be studying the Bible at home as soon as possible. And don't wait until they're ready to go to school to begin studying the Bible. A mother once asked a child psychologist when she was to start training her child. And he asked how old the child was. Being told that the child was five years old, that psychologist said, hurry home. You've already lost the best five years of your child's life. So our instruction and our teaching begins as soon as they're born. You know, and I've heard the, I've heard uh, about how people have read to the baby uh, in the mother's womb before it was born. And, uh, you know, how that begins, uh, that the baby hears and understands those things. And maybe not understands, but hears. And so it is a uh, beginning path of education as soon as birth happens and as soon as you can begin training a child. So some of the things that parents can do are, first of all, and we've, we've talked about this many times in the last uh, few weeks as we've studied this book and the previous book, again, attending church services, Hebrews 10.25. Parents should always bring their children to the church services and not just send them. Again, that's an example that we have to set. Judge Sam Davis Tatum of Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court in Nashville said, I've tried approximately 8,000 boys and girls under 17 years of age for violating the law. Of that number, there has not been a child in the court whose father or mother went to Sunday school or church on a regular basis. Of that, approximately 8,000, only 41 of them, of, of the 8,000, only 41 of them went to Sunday school or church themselves. So it's very important, and you see the uh, potential uh, results uh, demonstrated there by uh, <coughs> their attendance in church. Some other things that uh, uh, parents must do is, uh, maintain wholesome speech. And um, then another thing is avoiding becoming uh, unbecoming bad habits. A father and his son entered a store. The clerk asked the father, what will you have? And he said, a pack of cigarettes. And turning to the boy, the clerk said, what will you have? And that boy said, the same as my dad. So whenever a child sees a parent uh, drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes or uh, use other forms of tobacco or other unnecessary and unbecoming habits, then the child will continue in that same direction many times. And so, again, we have to avoid those bad habits. Uh, in this particular example, it says that once the father heard the son say that he would take the pack of cigarettes as well, the father said, well, uh, in second thought, uh, I don't want the cigarettes. So those things should be alarms to us. And we should be uh, thinking of the contributing factors we have in the lives of our children and grandchildren. By uh, The next thing is by cultivating religion as a chief, chief topic of conversation and concern in the home. Let's turn in our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy 6, beginning with verse 6, another one of my favorite passages. Um, Deuteronomy 6, verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. So we should be um, discussing godly things <clears throat> uh, each day with our children. We should be uh, reading our Bible and studying our Bible and, and talking about uh, things. We should be answering questions that our children have with biblical answers. Uh, I think, you know, the Bible says that all things that pertain to life and godliness are held in God's word. And, and so we can answer all questions that our children have from God's word. 
Uh, Matthew twelve thirty four says, Out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. So if the Lord's church is laying heavily on our hearts, as it should be, we will often speak of it. And parents should avoid criticizing the church, the preacher, the elders, the deacons, Bible school teachers, <clears throat> and other church leaders in the presence of their children. But, you know, oftentimes that is not the case. Oftentimes, um, children hear the constant uh, complaints of the church about the church um, from the husband and wife or parents. Um, the children hear that, and that's what they see and hear. <clears throat> he says here, in some homes, on the Sunday meal consists of stewed elders, roasted preachers, and baked song leaders. And then we wonder why later in life the children become uh, teenagers and adults who do the same things. And we know that uh, the church leaders are not always um, making decisions that everyone is in, in a favor of, but those decisions are made based on God's word. We know that uh, song leaders do not so always sing in tune. And, um, but we are singing to God, and so we should be mindful of that. And we always know preachers receive uh, quite a bit of criticism for things that they say in the pulpit and things that they do, but we should be mindful of, uh, again, doing things and speaking uh, good, wholesome speech, and we should, be, we should be uplifting and not bringing down. Uh, the next point is we should be encouraging family devotionals. Genesis 12 uh, tells us that everywhere Abraham went, he worshiped God with his family. And so we can trace his journeys and we can see the studying that happened in the lives of his children. So we as Christians should be uh, also encouraging our children to study God's word and maintain family devotionals. We should be reading the Bible with our family, with our children, and the home must contain food for the soul as well as for the body. Families should pray together, and it's still true that families who pray together stay together. So let's be mindful of our responsibility of uh, maintaining Bible study and devotion, prayer, and um, feeding the souls of our children and grandchildren. We should also be encouragement to our children to become uh, Christians when they reach the age of accountability. And we know that that's no specific age, that the Bible doesn't say that when you reach this certain point in your life. But we do know uh, that we can tell when a, a child becomes uh, accountable, they know the truth, they, they know between right and wrong, they know God's word, they know the plan of salvation. And so uh, we should be encouraging and influencing our children to become obedient to the gospel. We should be impressing our children with the fact that there's a place in the kingdom of God for them. Uh, we, should bring, we should encourage them to bring uh, friends as guests to the church services. Uh, we should encourage them to help friends in need. We should encourage them to check on those who are not in Bible class. We should encourage them to take part in worship services, and we should encourage them to be present in Vacation Bible School and other church activities that are available. We should provide good, wholesome recreation for our children, and we must show them the best way to live in the world. And that best way to live in the world is to live above the world. And so we must um, teach them not to patronize the world, and we must teach them to um, live their lives with heaven in mind. We know that heaven is there. We know that death is going to take place at some point. And so we must be teaching our children to live for heaven. And the things that we do in our lives, we should be pointing them to the cross. And that should be our goal with not only our family and our children, but with those that we come in contact with. We know that the devil is there. 
We know that there's evil in the world, and we know uh, that it's very easy to come in contact with that evil. Uh, we should be encouraging our children and uh, preventing them from getting involved in activities that are wrong, such as uh, the dangers of dancing, immodesty, gambling, drinking, and petting. And there are several passages there. We know Galatians 5.19 uh, through 21 tells us about uh, the sins of the devil. And then we can look at uh, 1 Timothy 2.9, Romans 12.7. Proverbs 21 and 1 Peter 2.11. Those are all passages that, that teach us to guide our children uh, away from those sins that I mentioned. And then uh, next is we have to deliver or administer proper discipline. We should avoid being unreasonable and we should never be unduly severe again unreasonable in punishment we should never manifest anger when we administer discipline we should never be partial in administering discipline we should be avoid holy being wholly negative in discipline and we must be consistent so we know that uh, at times it is uh, difficult sometimes to um, keep your anger out of discipline uh, but we should be uh, administering discipline without anger. We should be impartial, and we we should be consistent. Uh, we can't say that you can do something today and then not do it tomorrow and then punish the child and then let them do it again the next day and then punish them the, the following day. We have to be consistent in our discipline. We should be uh, helping them uh, pick their friends and their peers Think about Lot and the price that he paid in Genesis chapter 19 uh, for failing in this particular area. Again, we should be providing a wholesome influence and we should surround them with good people. Psalm 1-1 is mentioned here. We've read that a few times throughout this study. Um, and that is the part in Psalm, that Psalm 1-1 person is the one who meditates on God's word both day and night. Uh, and we have to spend time with our children. You know, as I mentioned as we started, the 92,000 hours that the children spend at home uh, in some places, those are just uh, places to fill time. But we should have uh, good, influential time, not just to eat and sleep. Again, th those devotionals and other Bible study techniques are good things to um, spend that time doing. You know, when we think of uh, the influence by fathers, we think there's there's so many ch fathers influenced or, or uh, uh, interested in golf and sports, and they uh, spend countless hours playing golf or sports or trying to get their children to be involved in those things. They should be working and, and influence their influencing their children in the study of God's Word. Mothers also have responsibility. They may not be playing golf or sports, but they might, might find other things that take up their time. But we should be using more time to influence our children than we do for recreational activities. And we should be providing a Christian education. The Christian school is a wonderful place to uh, supplement the home in assistant, assisting parents in giving their children such an education. And we know that in our particular area, there are no uh, Christian schools, but we should be influencing our children by our own actions. <clears throat> but if we were living in areas where there were Christian schools, we should be uh, certainly sending our children there so that that, can, that environment can help uh, assist in the home life or the, the environment of the home and the responsibilities of the home. And by above all, finally, in this particular section, is the Christian should be living the Christian life in front of their children. 
We've said this so many times that a children, that a child will follow the example of their parents quicker than following someone else. And so, um, if our children see us faithful in attendance, uh, living our lives faithfully, uh, avoiding the sins of the devil, then we can influence our children to do the same thing. And you know, children have a responsibility too. Children are to be obedient, Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Children are to honor their parents, Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Children are to help their parents, Matthew 21, 28 through 32. Children should be considerate, loving, respectful, and thoughtful toward their parents, Proverbs 19, 26. Uh, children should never be striking or cursing their parents, Exodus 21, 15, and 17. Children should heed their parents' counsel and instruction, Proverbs 1, 8. And children should never be stubborn, rebellious, or drunkard, Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21. So children have a responsibility as well, but we know when children are young, we should be influencing them. And as they grow older, hopefully they will keep that influence in their heart and they will live their lives as they should. Uh, and even the older uh, individuals can be an influence in the home. And they can do that by setting a good example through wise counsel and instruction, Titus 2, 1 through 8. And uh, the older individuals must avoid um, a negative influence on the home, uh, living exclusively in the past, fault finding, feeling mistreated, or being hard to get along with, or inactive in the services of the church. So there, as we uh, conclude this lesson, we see many things that we can do to make our homes better, to be a better influence on our homes and our children and to allow them to grow and prosper in the kingdom of God, that their uh, number one goal and priority is living a faithful Christian life. We should be influencing them to become Christians when they become of the proper age, and we should do from birth until that point, we should be teaching them God's principles about the church, about heaven, and we should be living our lives with all that in mind and living our lives with heaven as our goal. We'll conclude that lesson. Uh, and next week we will uh, talk about the Christian's influence in winning souls. Again, a very important topic in our particular time period. We know that uh, there are many souls that are lost, and we know that we should be doing all that we can to help those individuals reach heaven. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for being with us, and if we can do anything to assist you, certainly please let us know.